Hey everybody, today we're going to be checking out what, in my opinion, is one of the most, if not the most, complex O-scale train sets ever made. I'm talking about Lionel's Amtrak Acela set, and it's coming up right now on Eric's Trains. So anybody who's seen the Acela set knows that what you're seeing here is really just the tip of the iceberg. The complete Acela set, including the expansion pack, is well over 13 feet long. So yeah, it is a massive train set. So the current Acela appeared in Lionel's 2021 Volume 1 catalog, and it arrived earlier this year in 2022. Now, because the Acela is such a complicated set, as you'll see in this review, it has sort of a checkered past. The original Acela came out in 2005. And although that Acela was much less of a set than the current Acela, in my opinion, it only had one powered locomotive and it didn't have any sound cars or anything, it did have one standout feature and that was the motorized opening doors. On command, you could have all the doors on all the passenger cars open up so that your O-scale passengers could get on and get off the train. It was a really cool feature when it worked. The motorized doors ended up being very problematic, not only for customers, but for Lionel, because they just didn't work dependably. Sometimes they'd work, sometimes they didn't. You know, temperamental would be a kind of a kind word to use for those motorized doors. People who were really into them would tweak them to try to get the best performance out of them, but at best they were unreliable and undependable. And because of that, a lot of customers got upset and the reputation of the Lionel Acela set was stained. And the damage to the Acela's reputation was so bad that when Lionel decided to recatalog the Acela in 2012, they ended up not making it because they didn't get enough orders. And I think one of the reasons for that was because a lot of people remembered how undependable the previous Acela was and just didn't want to spend the money on it. So Lionel sat on the Acela until 2021 when they finally recataloged it, only this time they actually made it. And what's cool is that this time when they cataloged it, they offered it in a variety of different road names and fantasy paint schemes. So of course they did the prototypical Amtrak paint scheme that you see here. They also did a concept Amtrak paint scheme, and then they did Santa Fe, Milwaukee Road, New Haven, Union Pacific, Pensy, and the Polar Express. Now, they didn't end up making all of those. They only made the ones they got orders for. So I know that the Milwaukee Road version was canceled and a couple others were, but I know they made the Amtrak versions as well as the Santa Fe and the Polar Express, which is really cool. Now, in my opinion, the new Acela set is much improved over the original Acela set. So not only do you have modern legacy command and legacy rail sounds on board, and you've also got Bluetooth, but you've also got a second powered locomotive instead of the dummy locomotive at the rear of the train that the original set had. And then if you get the expansion pack, you've also got a Station Sounds equipped cafe car, which greatly enhances the audio experience of the set because as you probably know, electric trains really don't make that much noise. There's no diesel roar, there's no chuffing, there's just sort of a soft whir of the electric motor. And so adding a station sounds car really enhances the whole audio experience and makes the set that much more fun. However, the one feature that is not on the newest Cella set is the motorized opening doors on the passenger cars. Lionel has dropped that feature. And while some people might see this as a negative, I'm actually okay with it for a couple reasons. First of all, it's not the first time in Lionel's long history that they've backed off of a new feature that didn't work quite right. But the other thing is that I don't think Lionel really had a choice if you think about it. If you put yourself in their shoes, okay, so you need to fix the motorized opening doors. Let's say you wanna fix them. Well, you're really gonna to have to redesign them from the ground up because the old electronics are outdated, you're gonna to have to use new electronics, and redesigning it is gonna cost a whole lot of money, which they may not have in the budget. But just for argument's sake, let's say they did have the money in the budget and they did redesign the door mechanisms, even then, they still might not work reliably because what you're asking is for every door on every car to open up at the same time. You know, you're asking for a lot of motors to all work at the same time and all work perfectly. And if there's even a chance that they don't work perfectly, well, the Acela's reputation is gonna be damaged again. And so I think Lionel took the only reasonable and logical course of action in dropping the doors because they had to restore the reputation of the set and make it something that was reliable and that people would wanna spend their money on. And really, in my opinion, I think we've gained a lot more than we've lost. Yeah, you lost the motorized doors, 
but you've also gained a fully functioning locomotive at the other end of the train, which is a huge deal. And then you've also got the station sounds car in the expansion pack. So really, I think even though the new set doesn't have the motorized opening doors, I think it is far better than the original Acela set. So I keep talking about how complicated this set is, and hopefully through the course of this video, I'll be able to demonstrate that to you. There's just so much going on with this set. But because it's so complex, it has a very high price tag. The retail price on the Acela set itself, which includes the two powered locomotives and three passenger cars, is $2,500. And the retail price on the three car expansion pack that includes the Station Sounds car is right at $1,000. So if you get the entire train, you're looking at almost $3,500. Yes, it is very expensive. Now, the original Acela was very expensive as well back in 2005. The Acela set sold for $2,000, and the expansion pack was, I believe, $800. So all in, it was $2,800 for the entire set. So here in 2022, it's now $700 more than it was in 2005. But actually, I don't think that price increase is really that bad if you think about it. Because, well, first of all, everybody knows inflation has been crazy for the last couple years, so that's responsible for some of it, and there's really nothing you can do about that. But also, I think you're getting more with this set than you did with the Acela set, like I've been saying. Yeah, you lost the opening doors, but you gained a fully functioning locomotive at the rear end, and you've also got the station sounds car. So when you take all those factors into consideration, a $700 price increase over the last 17 years really isn't as bad as it sounds. And I definitely think you're getting more for your money now than you did back then. But don't get me wrong, this is a very expensive set. It is a premium top tier set. And because of that, it's not gonna be for everybody. There's gonna be a lot of people who simply can't afford this set. And Lionel knows that. That's why they make a lot of more affordable trains as well. I mean, just a couple months ago, I was over at Costco and I got a Harry Potter ready to play set for $65. So Lionel does make plenty of affordable stuff, but their premium top tier stuff is always gonna be expensive. And by the way, you know, a lot of people think that trains are more expensive now than they used to be. And there's some truth to that, but in reality, premium top tier train sets from Lionel have always been expensive. And as just an example of that, if you go back to the 1948 Lionel catalog, there's a set in there called the Electronic Control Set, which was a beautiful set that was actually way ahead of its time, kind of the ancestor of modern command control, and it sold for $200. Now, $200 isn't much these days, but when you calculate inflation, $200 is almost $2,500 today. So yeah, top tier train sets from Lionel have always been expensive. The only real difference nowadays is that Lionel makes a lot more top tier trains than they used to. I mean, back in the post-war and pre-war days, the trains were mainly marketed towards children. Yeah, the dad would get involved setting it up, but they were marketed towards kids and they were trying to make them as affordable as possible. So most of them would be starter sets and mid-level things and only a few top tier premium items in each catalog. But starting in the 1970s, the hobby shifted and became not only about kids, but also about adults wanting to get back into the hobby. And so for that reason, nowadays, Lionel makes a lot of top tier train sets along with a lot of more affordable starter sets. Anyway, enough of all that. Let's go ahead and start the review of the Acela. All right, so because the Acela is such a long train set, there's really no way to get it all in one shot. So we'll start off by checking out the locomotives that operated each end first, and then we'll check out the passenger cars after that. So we've got two fully functioning locomotives here, 2021 and 2024, and they are basically identical. The only difference is the road numbers and the fact that one of these has a male coupler, the other one has a female coupler. I'll show you those in just a moment. So these are both motorized units with legacy command, legacy rail sounds, full lighting, and motorized operating pantographs. And they operate in a really cool paired mode so that the whole train operates as one so that no matter which direction you're traveling, you always have a head unit at the front and a tail unit at the back. Now the best way to demonstrate it is just to start it up and show it to you. But before we do that, we're gonna go in for some close-up shots of these locomotives and check out some of the details. The front of one of these locomotives looks amazing. It's got a great paint job, of course, but then you've got operating ditch lights on either side. In the middle, we've got the two headlights, and then on either side are the operating marker lights. We've got add-on windshield wipers on the cab, which looks fantastic. It's got a modestly detailed interior. There's a hand-painted crew figure in there, and the interior is also lighted. And then one of my favorite things is the nose 
pops down like that and you can remove it to reveal a non-functioning O-scale coupler. And then when you want to put it back in place, you pop it in there and slide it back up. Moving back, you can see one of the trucks on these locomotives, and honestly, these are some of the most detailed truck side frames I've ever seen in O-scale. They look absolutely amazing. We've got some nice step detail here and add-on grab irons on either side of the door, and the door does open like that, and it is sprung, so it will snap back shut, and there's one on the other side as well. Here in the middle, we've got a nice Amtrak logo, and then we've got this cool kind of ribbed vent stuff going on here. And toward the back, we've got another one of those fantastic looking trucks and, of course, a beautiful Acela logo. And here's a look at the gap between the two locomotives when they're coupled together. Now, obviously, they won't be coupled together when the full train is built, but the gap between the locomotives and the cars is very similar. And as you can see, it's not bad at all. I like the job that Lionel did on the ends of these locomotives. So you can see we've got all sorts of nice detailing molded into the plastic body. And some of these are add-on parts, including these non-operational bumpers right here on the corners and then we've got a nice soft rubber diaphragm and inside there we've got a door that does open and it's sprung got the road number right there and I don't know if you can see it very well but there are add-on metal grab irons on either side of the door and then down here we've got the male coupler the other locomotive has a female coupler and it's one of those kinematic couplers so I'll show it to you when we look at the underside of this locomotive but Basically, it can come out pretty far, and it's sprung, and it can come out to the corners, and then they've got these sprung little corner pieces right here. Let me get my finger out of the way, and I'll use the poker to activate it, but yeah, you can see they can come out pretty far, and that allows the coupler to come out pretty far, and thereby allows the locomotives and the train to get around tighter curves than they ordinarily would. By the way, the minimum required curve for the Acela set is 072. The rooftops of these locomotives are really some of my favorite spots on the entire set because there's so much going on. So starting off right above the cab, we've got a couple of lift rings. And then we've got some nice molded in details. And then we've got the start of all this electrical equipment, including insulators and other assorted doodads. Now, I'd be lying if I said I know what all that stuff is supposed to be, but I know it looks cool, and that's what matters to me. And hey, I rhymed. Maybe from now on, I'll start doing these product review videos in rhyme only. <laughs> and in this shot, you can see all that electrical stuff continues down the side, back toward the panographs. Now, if I lift it up and tilt it a bit, you can see there are the horns. Pretty cool. And while we're here in the middle, this piece can be removed, like so, to reveal the master controls for the engine. So here we've got the panograph controls. The top switch allows you to lock the panographs in any position you want. The bottom switch allows you to lock them all in the down position. Then we've got the unit pair switch that you use to pair the locomotives if you're going to use them in a set like we are now. Then right here we've got the Bluetooth on-off switch. And right here is the run program switch. And when you're done, this piece snaps back in place, like that. And now we come to the panographs. These things are very intricately detailed, and as you can see, they look amazing. They are operational. Now, you can't power the locomotive from the panographs or anything like that, but they are motorized, and they do go up and down, and they look great in action. Now, I'm going to tell you that these things are extremely delicate. Under normal operations, they'll be just fine. But when the panographs are in the raised position like this one is now, if you should happen to bump it with your hand or run it into a tunnel portal or something like that, chances are it's going to break off and it's going to break off in a way that can't be repaired. Ask me how I know. And once that happens, you'll either have to order a new panograph and replace it yourself, or if you're not comfortable doing that kind of work, you'll have to send it into Lionel for repair. So take my word, exercise extreme caution around these raised panographs. Here's what the underside of one of these locomotives looks like. We've got two pickup rollers per truck for nice solid center rail electrical contact. The speaker for the sound system is right here. And then right here we've got the sensor for the Lionel LCS sensor track if you choose to use one. And here's a look at the underside of that kinematic coupling system. So it's got these V grooves and that spring and that allows it to go out pretty far to get around tight curves like that. And then the spring brings it back to center. 
All right, now I want to power these things up and show you how they work. I've already paired the two locomotives together using the instructions that come with the set when you buy it. I could show you that process in this video, but it's easier if you just read the instructions for yourself. Now, I will say there is a bit of a learning curve. The first time around, it took me about 10 or 15 minutes to get these things working properly. Now I can do it a bit faster. So yeah, if you get one of these sets, I would strongly recommend reading the instruction manual thoroughly before operating the set. That'll save you a lot of headaches. On my legacy remote, I've got the Acela programmed into train slot number three. So let's start it up. This is the dispatcher. Please start on and stand by. Over. I'll be here at the head end. Uh, Nora? Make that tie. Out. Uh, So we're configured to go in this direction right now. So we've got the rear panograph up on the lead unit and the front panograph up on the rear unit. But if I change direction, watch what happens. Very nice. And these pantographs work good most of the time. They're a little bit temperamental. Sometimes they get a little confused and you have to reset them, but most of the time they work just fine. The sound setup on this thing is really cool. So right now we've got prime mover sounds coming from both locomotives, kind of that soft whirring noise of an electric motor. But the horn, the bell, and the crew talk sounds are gonna come from whichever unit is the lead unit, which right now is this one. So if I blow the horn, or if I sound the bell, or if I activate the crew talk sounds, and then the dispatcher, let me know when I'm clear. Over. All those sounds are coming from this unit, but watch what happens when we change direction. Now those same sounds are gonna come from the rear unit. That's pretty neat. I don't know if it comes across in the video, but the horn, the bell, and the crew talk sound shift from this unit to this unit, and vice versa when you change direction. This is the head end. Now it's back here. Now the shifting of those sounds doesn't make that big of a difference when you've got the two units coupled so close together like they are now, but when there's six passenger cars in between these things, it makes a huge difference. Anyway, let's do a closer examination of the sound effects. So here are the five horn sounds that you have to choose from. check out some of the crew talk sounds and you may have already noticed that a lot of the crew talk sounds on this set are voiced by women which I think is just great. Lionel has gotten much better in recent years in including female voices on their locomotives. I think it's long overdue and I love it. And here's your dispatcher. Let me know when I'm clear. Over.
effects on these locomotives are also pretty cool. You've got work lights above the trucks, and then there's a headlight, marker lights depending on direction, and you've also got ditch lights, so let's check it out. Before we move on to the passenger cars, we'll do the shutdown sequence. This is five head in. Binders applied. We're off to sign the register book. Out. All right, now let's talk about the Acela passenger cars for a few minutes. Now, these are not your typical Lionel O scale passenger cars, and by that I mean they're not simple. They're not simple at all. You know, normally when you get a passenger set, the locomotive or locomotives are the star of the show, and the passenger cars are much simpler and therefore much less expensive, but that's not the case here. These passenger cars are immensely complex. You could really make the argument that the passenger cars on this set are at least, if not more, complex than the locomotives. And that's why the Acela set and the expansion pack are so expensive. I can personally testify to how complicated these cars are. Because when I first got this set, one of the cars, I can't remember which one, it had a loose part rattling around on the inside. I think one of the tables had come loose in shipping. That kind of stuff happens. That's life. And I thought, okay, I'll just open the car up and resecure that piece with some CA glue. No big deal. And, you know, resecuring that piece was no big deal. That took about 30 seconds. But the process of opening up the car, disassembling it, and then reassembling it took me about four hours. I'm not kidding. These things are not for the faint of heart. There's all sorts of stuff going on. And all I'll say is that if you're the kind of person who wants to learn how to service your own trains and do your own repairs, which, you know, if you're going to be in this hobby for the long term, I would strongly recommend doing because if you know how to repair your own trains, you can save yourself a lot of time and aggravation. But if you want to learn how to do it, I would not recommend starting with these Acela cars. These require a lot of repair expertise, and if you don't know what you're doing, you could get yourself in trouble really fast. In fact, even me, a few times when I was working on them, I thought, oh my god, I'm never going to get this thing back together. But eventually I did, but yeah, very complicated. So what makes them so complex? Well, it's because there's a lot going on. You've got a fully detailed interior with LED lighting. Then you've got the passive tilt mechanisms on the trucks. You've got the kinematic couplers and all sorts of sprung mechanisms going on over here that have to be disassembled to open up the car. Then you've got the opening doors and the lights associated with the doors. And by the way, this is all without the motorized door mechanisms that the original Acela had. I can't imagine what it must have been like to work on one of those cars. It must have been close to a nightmare. So is all this complexity worth it? Absolutely. These cars are great. And hopefully after you see some close-ups and also see these things in action, you'll agree with me. Now, when you buy the base Acela set, you get the two locomotives, of course, and then you get three passenger cars. So you get the number one first class car that has two doors. This goes by the first locomotive. Then you get the number two four-door business class car right here. And then you get the number six two-door business class car that goes at the other end by the other locomotive. So that takes care of cars one, two, and six, but what about cars three, four, and five? Well, that's where the expansion pack comes in. So with the expansion pack, you get three additional cars. You get number three, which is a four-door business class car. Then you get number four, which is a four-door cafe car. And this is a station sounds car that has all sorts of cool sound effects. We'll check those out later. And then finally, you get the number five four-door business class car. And with that, you have all six cars to complete the entire Acela train set. And like I said in the intro, that gives you over 13 feet of train. Going in for a close-up of one of these cars, and this is the first class car, by the way, you can see the end of the car looks a lot like the ends of the locomotives. We've got all this detail around here with these bumpers. Then we've got the soft rubber diaphragm and a nice door in there. Now, the doors on the first class car are a bit fancier than on the other cars. The other ones have entrances that look a little bit different, which I think is kind of cool. And then down here, we've got another kinematic coupler. This is a female coupler. And again, we've got the sprung things on the side that allow it to get around tighter curves. So this is how these couplers work. You can see we've got a male coupler coming from the locomotive in this case, although it could be another passenger car. And then we've got a female coupler on the first class car. 
and it's important to note that there's a little notch at the top of the male coupler that prevents the couplers from coming apart easily once they're together so now this isn't the easiest thing to do on camera but we'll give it a try set it up on there and then I'm gonna come up on top and push it down and there we go and that's how these things couple together. Now it should be noted, in case it's not obvious, these are sort of what I would call semi-permanent couplers. The train set is not meant to be disassembled and reassembled all the time. Once you get it together, if you can help it, try to keep it together. Now let's talk about the passenger car doors. And by the way, the trucks on the passenger cars look just as good as the trucks on the locomotives. Anyway, in the previous Acela, it had motorized doors that would open automatically at the push of a button. As I said, they cut out the motorized operation in this version because it was very problematic. Anyway, even though the doors are no longer motorized, they still have lights associated with them when they open. So there's one down here and one up here. So if I push on the door, it pops out and I can open it up and look what happens. This light's on and this little red light up here is on. I'm not sure if you can see it very well in the video, but there's a little red light up there that's on as well. And then when I close the door, they go off. Pretty cool. The interior of each car is very nicely detailed and I've dimmed the room lights again to better highlight the interior decoration and the interior lighting. And as you can see, it looks fantastic. It did a great job here. On the top of each passenger car, there are two of these fan units. So let's take a closer look at one of those. On top of each of these units, there are two fans and each fan has a free spinning fan blade inside. So if I blow some compressed air in there, they spin around, pretty cool. And then there's this little panel that opens up. Now there's two of these panels on each car. On most of the cars, under one panel, you'll find nothing. And under the other, like this one, there's a switch to turn the interior lights on and off if you so desire. However, on the Station Sounds Cafe car that you'll see, under one lid there's the light control, and then under the other lid there are some sound control switches. Oh, and check out the ribbing on these roofs. It looks great. And now let's talk about that Station Sounds Cafe car. Now, of course, it's got sound effects, which we'll check out in just a second, but it's also a beautifully executed car, both on the outside and on the inside. So on the inside, you've got tables and booths and stools and people sitting there eating their food and getting a drink. There's also a kitchen and there's even a payphone. So like I said, the original Acela set did not have a sound car, whereas this one does. And I think it's a really nice improvement because having a sound car greatly increases the audio experience for the train because now you've got the locomotive sounds at either end and a nice cafe station sounds car in the middle. So on its own, if you don't do anything, the station sounds car will make some general sound effects when it's in motion, like this. Just kind of the general bangs and clangs of a car in motion. However, if you program it into your legacy or TMCC system, you'll get a whole host of other sound effects. We would like to welcome all ticketed passengers aboard the Acela. Clear the doors. 
The last thing I want to show you on these passenger cars is the underside so that we can take a look at the trucks and check out the passive tilt feature. So first off, these trucks just look really cool. They've got this plate here and then all these little wheels here that do something. There's little brake calipers and stuff. And you certainly don't need that stuff there on the underside of the car. I mean, nobody's ever going to see it. But you know it's there and it makes it that much cooler. And then the passive tilt mechanism, well, that's it right there. It really doesn't look like much. But the trucks are on a gimbal and it can tilt from side to side. Or more to the point, the car can tilt from side to side while the trucks remain on the track. And yeah, it may not look like much right now, but what'll happen when the train goes around a curve, the passenger cars will tilt into the curve and it looks really cool. All right, now comes the fun part. Let's go ahead and start this thing up. This is the dispatcher. Please start up and stand by. Over. Over your head and uh, north. Make that tie. Out. Over your head Attention, please. The Zella is now boarding.
folks so there you have it the new Lionel Amtrak Acela set with expansion pack I love this thing it's absolutely fantastic like I said the retail on the set itself is right at 2500 and the retail price on the expansion pack is right at a thousand now keep in mind that if you go through a good Lionel dealer you will be able to get or you should be able to get a little bit of a discount off those retail prices and if you get it on eBay well <laughs> you'll probably pay twice what it's worth so not sure I'd do that now as always if you're looking for a good Lionel dealer or try my favorite train store which is Legacy Station. You can find them on the web at LegacyStation.com or give them a call at 770-339-7780. If you'd like to support this channel I would greatly appreciate it. That can be done through Patreon at Patreon.com slash Trains. Patreon supporters get all sorts of perks and benefits and you can read about those benefits on my Patreon page. I'd like to put a big thank you out there to all of my current Patreon supporters. Your support means the world not only to me but to the future of this channel and an extra big thank you goes out there to my premium tier supporters you'll see their names at the end of this video anyway that's it for now i'm eric siegel thanks for watching and i'll see you next time Hey everybody, today we're going to be checking out what, in my opinion, is one of the most, if not the most, complex O-scale train sets ever made. I'm talking about the Lionel... <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about.